Hello, Emmanuel family. Pastor Justin here. I'm so glad that you're with us during this fall campaign. Go be the church on Sundays, in your connection groups, and here in these weekly devotional videos. This week we're focusing on challenges. When I think of challenges, I think of football, not just because I'm a Commanders fan. Eh? I think of challenges because uh, each coach in a football game gets what's called a challenge flag. They can throw it if they think something wasn't handled right, if they were short of the first down, or uh, some ball wasn't caught. The challenge flag, um, coaches have them in their pockets, they might have them, some of them even have them in their socks. I have my challenge flag right here, and you might notice that I made it myself out of a Spider-Man handkerchief and a ping pong ball. But Sometimes we can feel like uh, we are getting challenge flags thrown at us. Now, in football, the coaches only have two challenge flags per game uh, because if they had unlimited challenge flags, well, they'd use them on every play that didn't go their way, right? But it feels like sometimes there's not just two challenges being thrown at us. Uh, everything and, and everyone has a challenge flag that they're throwing at us constantly and, and living out our faith in this world can feel like a constant challenge. In fact, Jesus promised us that it would be uh, a constant challenge, but he said to take heart because he has overcome the world. Often we're misunderstood. People might make assumptions based on other Christians that they know, or, or maybe the constant pressure to be perfect has made you just fall off the wagon entirely and go back into old sinful patterns. Man, our, our lives are a challenge. But if we think that we have it bad, uh, we should look back to the Thessalonian church. Paul started this church in Acts 17. You can read that story. And basically, right after he started the church, he got driven out of the town of Thessalonica. And after he left, there was still persecution going on. But he wrote a couple of letters to that church. And in those letters, instead of chastising them, he actually encouraged them. He said, hey, you guys have been doing good, even with the challenges and persecutions that you've been going through. I want to read 2 Thessalonians 2, 13 through 17 to you. Paul writes this, But we ought to thank God always for you, brothers and sisters, loved by the Lord, because from the beginning God has chosen you for salvation through sanctification, by the Spirit, and through belief in the truth. He called you to this through our gospel, so that you might obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. That gospel is good news for us. We're God's chosen people because of his spirit and our belief in the truth of what our Lord Jesus has done. Paul continues to say, So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold to the traditions you were taught, whether by what we said or what we wrote. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us an eternal encouragement and good hope by grace, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good work and word. My encouragement to you all today is the same. Stand firm in what you already know to be true. The world is going to change around you. A culture will fall in and out of love with Jesus. A new sin will become trendy this week and fall out the next. It's tempting to throw in the towel and just go with the flow, but Paul encourages us in Galatians 6, 9, Let us not grow weary while doing good, for we will reap at the proper time if we don't give up. So that's my encouragement. My prayer for you is the same as Paul's prayer. May our Lord Jesus Christ and God our Father encourage your hearts and strengthen you for every good work and every good word. The one who loves us and gives us eternal encouragement and good hope by his grace is still able to strengthen us, to give us strength equal to a challenging task. We can go be the church even when it feels like a challenge.